This story started in 2005 when my colleague Joseph uh, Zakani found mouse studs with nibbled penises. And of course we didn't want to produce these mice. They derive from a systematic mutational analysis of a family of genes called the Hox genes. Now these genes are very important for embryonic development and they are clustered in the genome. That is, they are neighboring each other. And when we deleted part of this gene cluster, we noticed that the mouse stock was very difficult to maintain in our animal colony. When the mutation was transmitted by males, that was okay, and we got progeny. But when mutant females were used, they unexpectedly turned out to be very difficult to breed. We decided to monitor breeding cages to see what was going on. This is how we witnessed females pursuing males. Most of these mutant females inflicted severe bites at the genitals of their partners. Therefore, the cause of this reduced fertility seems to be of behavioral origin. The abnormal behavior was inherited from parent to daughter. Therefore, it must have been caused by a change in the genetic material. After transcribing and analyzing dozens of recordings, we found that genital biting was most frequent during the night of sexual receptivity when females actually mated. So we thought that female courtship behavior may be abnormal in this line. Our extensive follow-ups then showed that female mice, when they are in heat, actively solicit mating just like rats do. The mutant females chased their mates in a completely uncontrolled manner. What happens at the molecular level? When we deleted part of the HOXD gene cluster, one of the genes that were left behind became abnormally active in some specific cells in the brain. HOX genes are never normally expressed in the brain. Therefore, we think that this regulatory protein interfered with the genetic program of these cells, thereby causing something what geneticists call a gain-of-function effect and that was finally causes this amazing abnormal behavior. One may wonder if anything like this exists in humans, and in fact the human population represents the largest collection of mutants one can think of. Also it would be somehow difficult to record officially a similar behavior in humans, but who knows, perhaps future studies addressing the genetic basis of behaviors in humans may be very informative in this respect.